Welcome back to TMAC FPV, your home for your journey to better FPV, fun flights and racing stuff. Have you ever wondered what would happen to your quad if you were flying in a risky area such as near some mountains or over a forest or even over water and you lost video or worse yet, you fail safe? <coughs> it's a scary thought. Well today, we're going to show you how to overcome those fears with the use of Betaflight GPS Rescue Mode and we're going to use it on our micro FPV 3 inch quadcopter, the Flex RC Kalugo. Stay tuned. All right, the first thing we need to do is select which GPS receiver we're going to purchase for our quadcopter. There's a few out there on the market, and we're going to take a look at two. Uh, the first one is on Banggood, uh, and it is the BN180 GPS receiver, which uses both the uh, GPS and GLONASS uh, satellite constellations. There's also a BN220, which is just a little bit bigger, but to my knowledge, they both have the same capabilities. You can get this for $11.99 on Banggood. Uh, there's also another one which you can get on Amazon, which is made by Maytech, and it's the SAM M8Q GPS module. You can purchase that on Amazon for $27.99 or at Race Day Quads for $24.99. This is actually the... GPS module that we purchased and that we'll be using for our quadcopter. In this video, we're going to be going over how to wire this GPS receiver up to your flight controller, how to set it up on a switch in your OpenTX transmitter, as well as set it up in Betaflight for both activation using that switch for the GPS rescue mode and also using it as your fail-safe option. We're, we're going to finish up the video with a short flight test using the GPS rescue mode on our micro FPV 3-inch quadcopter, the Flex RC Kalugo. Everything we do in this video to set it up on both your transmitter and in beta flight, we've included in an easy-to-follow step-by-step checklist, which you can download for free at the link in the video description below. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we wire this thing up. It's only got four wires, as you can see here, and in our Flex RC Kalugo, we're using the Mamba Mini Mark II flight stack, flight controller, and ESC. And as our spare UART, we're going to be using UART 6. And these are the four pads that we'll be using to wire up our GPS receiver. 5 volts goes to the 5 volt pad. Ground goes to the ground pad. The RX wire of your GPS receiver is going to go to the TX pad of your flight controller and the TX wire of your GPS receiver is going to go to your RX pad on your flight controller. And that's it. That's how you wire it up to your flight controller. It's as simple as that. Next, we're going to take a look at how to set up a switch on your OpenTX transmitter for activating it. Okay, to set the GPS rescue mode up on a switch of your OpenTX transmitter, in my case, I've got the QX7. We go to the model selection page under the model that you're using, page up to the mixer page, which is page five and 12. And what you want to do is you want to select an open channel. And in our case, we're going to select channel 14. We're going to name this GPS. And we're going to exit, scroll down to the source, and in my case, I'm going to use the second switch from the left on the QX7, which is switch B. I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to flip switch B, and it'll automatically input it into the source for me. Exit. And that's how you set up a switch on the mixer page for your GPS. We just need to remember that we're using channel 14, which is going to be aux 10. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we mounted the GPS receiver on the Flex RC Kalugo. All right, first of all, since we're going to be mounting the GPS receiver on top of some carbon fiber, I wanted to make sure and put some heat shrink wrap over it to prevent any conductivity between the GPS receiver and the carbon fiber itself. So we went ahead and put some clear shrink wrap over the GPS receiver. 
These are the four wires that we connected uh, as we depicted earlier on UART 6. And then we went ahead and attached it to the top plate of the FlexRC Colugo at the front of the quadcopter uh, using double-sided foam tape. This is actually resting on some double-sided foam tape. And then we went ahead and put one zip tie over the top of it. And it's held on pretty securely. What you want to make sure of is that the GPS receiver is pointing up towards the sky as much as possible and away from any obstructions. The LiPo battery that I'll be using, this is the front strap of the uh, FlexRC Colugo front, front battery strap for the LiPo battery. So the front of the battery is actually only going to come up to about here. So there's still some space in between the LiPo battery and the GPS receiver. So any reception from satellites uh, shouldn't be blocked at all by the uh, LiPo battery. So we've got the GPS receiver securely mounted to the top of our quadcopter facing up with shrink wrap to prevent any conductivity between it and the carbon fiber frame. All right, the only thing we have left to do now is set it up into beta flight for both the use of the GPS rescue mode on the switch as well as our fail safe option. And then once we've done that, we'll go ahead and take out the FlexRC Colugo for a test flight with our GPS rescue mode. All right, now that we're connected to beta flight, the first place we want to go to is ports. We're going to go over ports, configuration, modes, OSD, fail safe, and then we're going to lastly take a look at the CLI. So let's go to ports first. And remember, we connected our GPS receiver to UART 6. So under UART 6, we go over to sensor input and we toggle on GPS. The default baud rate for this Maytech M8Q GPS receiver is 9600. I didn't change that. I'm just going to leave it at 9600. Save and reboot. Then we go over to the configuration tab. Under configuration, we want to make sure that our accelerometer is toggled on, that we've got our GPS toggled on. Our protocol for this Maytech M8Q GPS receiver is U-Blocks, and we're going to leave it at Auto Config. We want GPS status toggled on. Save and reboot. Next, we're going to go to Modes. We're going to connect our battery. Remember, we use channel 14 on our transmitter and switch B. So under GPS Rescue, we want to click Add Range. In this case, we've already added it. And we're going to select AUX 10 since we're, since we're using channel 14. Remember, the first four channels are for your control channels. So 14 minus 4 is AUX 10. Now when we flip switch B on our transmitter, this little yellow blip should move over here to activate GPS rescue. Like that. So our switch is set up properly on AUX 10 under modes in Betaflight. Save. Next we want to take a look at the OSD. I've got three OSD profiles set up. We're going to take a look at profile 3 which is when our GPS rescue is activated. I've got the number of satellites selected and the altitude. Number of satellites is up here. I, you can move these elements around on the screen just by clicking and dragging them wherever you want. So I've got the number of satellites up here. I've got the GPS latitude and longitude here. Latitude is depicted by this arrow up. It's up and down for north and south. And longitude is depicted by this arrow right, uh, which is east and west. And we've got home direction and home distance also selected. So here's home direction depicted by this arrow in the upper left hand corner and the distance to home is listed here as in this case 43 meters. And then for my post-flight statistics we're going to show max speed, max distance, max altitude, flight distance, and those are the GPS elements that'll be shown for our post-flight statistics. Click Save. Now, when we flip that switch B, it'll enter GPS rescue mode and the quadcopter will 
rotate around towards home and climb to the altitude which we specified and we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. At this point let's go to take a look at failsafe. So you can activate GPS rescue mode manually by using the switch. What we're going to take a look at now is how GPS rescue mode can be activated automatically by setting up GPS as your failsafe option. So we go to the failsafe tab and instead of drop which I normally have selected we select GPS rescue down here. Now you can set up the angle that the quadcopter will pitch forward at the maximum angle. In our case I've selected 35. You can select the initial altitude it climbs to once it's rotated itself and oriented itself facing back home. I've selected 70 meters. That should be more than enough altitude to get it over any trees or buildings or things of that nature which might be in between me and the quadcopter itself. Descent distance I've selected at 30 meters and I believe that's the minimum distance that is uh, acceptable. The reason I did this is I want the quadcopter, if it fails safes, if by losing uh, con the control signal from my transmitter, I want it to rotate and climb to an altitude of 70 meters and fly at that altitude for as long as possible, which will give me the longest amount of time possible to regain control of the quadcopter. Keep in mind this isn't return to home GPS. This is GPS rescue mode and the idea behind this is uh, either through manually flipping the switch or use of this failsafe procedure the quadcopter starts returning home to you and gives you the opportunity to regain control of the quadcopter manually. So we're going to take a look at the two scenarios which could happen. First of all, the manual switch activation example, and then we'll take a look at the automatic or the failsafe activation example. The example we use for the manual switch activation is if we have a loss of video. If you're flying and you lose video and you've got GPS rescue mode set up, then you can manually activate it with the switch on your transmitter that we've already set up. At that time, the quadcopter is going to spin around towards home and climb to the predetermined altitude which you had set up. In my case, it's 70 meters. It's going to begin flying home. At that point, there are two options. When the video returns, you can deactivate the switch and regain control of the quad. Or, if you do not do that, the quadcopter is going to start its descent on its own at the specified distance which you had set up in my case 30 meters. It's not going to land, it's going to crash. So the recommended approach is when the video returns deactivate the switch and regain control of the quadcopter. Of course if your video doesn't return then keep an eye out for it, line of sight, and watch for it to crash near you. The second option or the second example that we're going to take a look at is for failsafe. When you've got the failsafe mode as the GPS rescue mode and you've got an RX signal loss or a receiver signal loss, then automatically the quadcopter is going to spin and climb to that specified altitude and begin flying home. You will not have to activate the switch in order for it to do this. It will do this on its own automatically. There are two things that can happen then. You can activate the switch or not. If you do not activate the switch, the quadcopter is going to automatically hand control back to you when the signal returns. At that point, you're either going to be ready for it and you're going to start flying the quadcopter or you're going to crash. If after the quadcopter automatically spins and climbs and begins flying home and you activate the switch, then there are two options. When the signal returns, deactivate the switch and regain control of the quadcopter or once again the quad's going to descend on its own at the specified distance which in my case is 30 meters. So those are the two scenarios. Manual switch activation, automatic activation through failsafe and what can happen in each of these scenarios. I've listed two uh, notes down here. If for some reason you want to be able to fly the quadcopter without having the minimum number of satellites acquired then you need to set up the GPS rescue allow arming without fix to on using this command in the CLI. With this command set then you can actually arm the quad and fly the quad without having the appropriate number of satellites but it also means that your GPS rescue mode will not be available to you. If you have any other questions on GPS rescue mode uh, or need clarification on the various commands then you can always go to 
GitHub, Betaflight, and the GPS Rescue Mode, this link here, and it'll provide you with further explanation on GPS Rescue Mode. So there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. Using this fail-safe mode, the quadcopter is going to spin and climb to 70 meters, which means you don't want to have this fail-safe mode of GPS Rescue activated if you're flying in a garage because it'll automatically spin and climb to 70 meters, or try to, and it'll hit the ceiling of the garage. Same thing as if you're flying through a forest. It'll spin, try to climb to 70 meters, and get stuck up in some branches in a tree. So you've got to be somewhat uh, smart about how you choose to use GPS rescue as your fail-safe procedure. If you know you're going to be flying in an enclosed area, then I would recommend not using uh, GPS rescue mode as your fail-safe procedure, but instead use drop mode. All right, these are the settings I've used for GPS rescue mode for my fail-safe procedure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CLI. Let's save and reboot. Now, all that GPS settings that we just talked about, you can go ahead to your CLI and type get GPS, enter, and these are all the GPS settings. We're only going to take a look at a couple of these. The GPS rescue angle we went over was uh, that we set was 35. The default value is 32. The uh, allowed range is 0 to 200. If you know you're going to be flying into a strong headwind, then you might want to set the angle uh, higher than 35. The GPS rescue initial altitude, which it climbs to, has an allowed range of 20 to 100. Default is 50. I changed mine to 70 just to make sure it could clear any obstacles. The Rescue descent distance, when it starts descending towards you, if you have not regained control by manually deactivating the switch, in my case, I've set it to 30, so it will start descending towards me when it's 30 meters away from home. The allowed range is 30 to 500. The default value is 200. GPS rescue min satellites, I've set to 5. The allowed range is 5 to 50. The default value is 8. Real-world applications, you need a minimum of 4 GPS satellites for a three-dimensional uh, geolocation, basically at your XYZ position as well as time. Betaflight will allow you to have a minimum of 5, uh, probably for redundancy purposes. Uh, so I went ahead and set mine to 5. That way I know I can use GPS Rescue with a minimum of 5 satellites in case I'm only getting five, as opposed to waiting for eight satellites in some area, which may, I may only be getting six or seven. GPS rescue min distance to home, uh, I've set to 50. The allowed range is 50 to 1,000. The default value is 100. What this is, is how far the quadcopter has to be away from you initially in order for GPS rescue to be activated. So if you set it at 1,000, then GPS rescue mode will not be activated unless you're at least a thousand meters away from yourself. So I went ahead and set mine to 50. I think those are the only uh, things that uh, I wanted to go over. I'll show you how to go ahead and change one of these. If you wanted to change, uh, let's say, your GPS rescue min satellites to 7, go ahead and copy this, paste it, type in the word set, space, go back over here, change it to 7, hit enter, now it's set to 7, hit save, and now if I go back to the CLI and hit get GPS, the minimum number of satellites has been set to 7. I'm going to reset it to 5, which is what I want. That's how you change any of these parameters. Okay, what I'm going to do is Fly straight down this road for a while. Then I'm going to activate the switch, at which point she should spin around and climb to 70 meters and head on back home. After a while, I'll turn the switch off and regain control over it. Okay, I'm going to activate the switch. 
Deactivate it. Activate the switch. Deactivate it. We hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Remember to grab your free GPS setup checklist from the link in the video description below. If you know of somebody that's interested in getting started with FPV, please consider recommending to them the Fast Track FPV course as their clear flight path to FPV fun. If you're not yet a subscriber of the TMAC FPV channel, click on that subscribe button and join the TMAC FPV team. We appreciate your time. We'll see you in the next video. Clear skies, friend.